So functional programming has a lot of ideas that sound really good on paper. And I'll get this out of the way now. To be completely fair, some of those ideas are good. Most of those ideas are complete nonsense. And I'm going to show that by doing a sort of applied approach with functional programming. Let's make breakfast in as functionally pure way as possible. We're also joined by my doggo, who is apparently camera shy because he's been staring at me up until this camera uh, went on him. Oh, are you crying now? Okay then. Now, one thing functional programming teaches us is that you want your variable declarations, or in this case, our ingredients, as late as possible. And you want to evaluate those as late as possible. So, I'm going to be doing an omelette, and we'll throw a few different things in here, just whatever I can find in the kitchen that I don't mind using up ridiculous amounts of you'll see why that happens so I have these just shitty ass pepperoni we've got that and we need to heat it up so let's get a pan down hey That'll be a fine amount. Another thing functional programming teaches us is that should never, ever change state. If you need to change something, you create a duplicate of it and, you know, do the modifications on that one. So we need a duplicate of this. Where does this go? Well... They sort of teach you, don't worry about it, the garbage collector will deal with it. He'd like to be. That's the garbage collector. This is either going the way of a how-to basic video, or it's time to actually normally crack some eggs. How-to basic style videos coming later. Probably at the end of this, because I got a spare computer that I can completely obliterate, which I think would be kind of fun. But, no. We'll crack this normally. So now, I highly recommend adding a little bit of an acid to the eggs. Uh, usually that's done in the form of cream of tartar, which I do have. Just a little bit of this stuff goes quite a long way. But remember, we can't modify that state. That's bad for some reason. So, we need a new one of those. There we go. So we can add cream of tartar to one of these clones. What do we do with the old unmodified copy? That's an implementation detail you shouldn't worry about. But it gets dealt with by the garbage collector. But it doesn't stop there, guys. Adding an ingredient was one function. Whisking it up is a second function. That requires another copy. 
but we're not done adding things to this either. And I think you know what's happening with the clone again. Right into the uh, implementation details you shouldn't worry about. But for this one, we can go and add in the second ingredient. But as I had said, that was a separate function and we can't mutate state. We need to copy that again. And we've got our clone again. So this one goes the way of implementation details. And this one, we can finally whisk this up. Now, I have conveniently already made the clone of this as you know can't change state that's really bad and we've got to let that finish cooking you know this function has to uh has to complete while that's going on i thought it would be nice to add some cheese to the omelet so we need to grate this but guys we have a problem i can't i can't do this in a functional way this isn't something I can just make a copy of. So changing this changes the global state. Oh, but you see, you see, functional programming does have a solution to that. It's called the monad. And, well, I, I, to be fair, monads are used for more than just this. We'll just encapsulate this in a monad. It doesn't matter anymore. We're going to change the state, but it's fine because we're not going to change the state. Because reasons. And this should be getting pretty close to finished. So now we want to add the cheese. Oh right, we can't change that state. We have to, um, everything you've seen up to this point has to be copied again. Or rather, I mean really, the state of this has to be copied again, but yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. See, th this video has been cut down for you extensively, but I'm at like 23 minutes at this point. So, there's enough in the garbage collector, there's enough of uh, duplication of data just to avoid some global state change that is somehow bad. Nah. That was way easier than copying this whole thing just to avoid a state change. I will do some more of these, each of them covering a slightly different point. Some of them are going to build up on top of this in, in a few ways, uh, especially the one dealing with concurrency. You don't have to avoid global state to get an efficient concurrent program. Uh, the problem isn't global state, the problem's the approach. And uh, In fact, if you know enough about how monads work, they're... You, you still have global state. <laughs> Encapsulating it doesn't make it not global. So, yeah, and it, it, that that form introduces its own problems, anyways. But that's for that's for another video. I'm gonna eat this omelet. You have a good day.